Good afternoon, everyone in the Find Your Fire tribe. A wonderful windy afternoon here on the hill in Tobago. I'm so glad that you could join us for our special event with Terry Osborne today. For those of you who are new to the tribe, I'm Wendy Yorching, founder of the tribe and also founder of Healing Spaces Caribbean. And every Friday, we have a special chi lifting event with somebody special to give you information, share journeys, share wisdom, and generally elevate the energy of my tribe members. And I, enjoy, I encourage you always to feel free to join in and ask questions. I'll be monitoring the chat. If, you, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, just uh, type hashtag live so I know you're there. And for those of you who watch the replay, type hashtag replay so that we know that you did come and give us your comments because Terry will re respond to all comments later on. So I would like to welcome Terry Osborne, our artist in house. Terry, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm gonna just hand over to you so that you can tell the tribe a little bit about you. Okay, thank you very much, Wendy, and a pleasant good afternoon. It's afternoon where I am. To everyone who is on the Zoom and also those who might be on the live stream on Facebook, it is definitely a pleasure, a real and distinct pleasure for me to be here with you this afternoon to share a little bit about my journey using um, art as a healing modality. Um, my journey with art started when I, I was a young child. I found my passion for art and um, I continued to study it all the way through primary and secondary school. Um, for those of you who are outside of our country, that's like um, up to high school. So at 18, when it became time to decide what I wanted to do in college, I wanted to be the, the artist. But back in those days, Art wasn't really something that people thought you could make money off of, graphic artists and so on, um, as we have them today, they weren't really in great abundance at that time. So my parents said, um, you want to do what? <laughs> we have to spend money for you to go to college to do what? And they said, uh, no, we don't think so. And so I um, kind of went, okay. And I just, I don't know, I let life get in the way and I gave I gave up my passion. I stopped doing anything to do with art. I threw myself into my studies. Um, I studied a business degree. I got involved in the corporate world and art was just left by the wayside. Strangely enough, I had three brushes, three sable brushes. And for those of you who don't know, sable brushes are very expensive um, brushes in, in the art world. They are a bit pricey. And I kept those and I have them today and I, I kept them. I've always had them in a drawer somewhere and I would stumble across them and think, oh, I should, I should do something. And then I'd say, oh, you know, I don't have time for it. But guess what? Life decided that I apparently needed the time to reconnect with my art. I became ill. I have a chronic illness. And as a result, I had to stop working. And when that happened, my whole life changed. In fact, my entire world changed. To go from being someone in the corporate world and having a job and colleagues and friends and that whole life to, to being basically retired um, at around 40, it was a huge adjustment that I wasn't prepared for. And other things in my life started to fall apart as well. And um, I started to look for things to do for me. And I reconnected with art. As a result, I started doing little sip and paint events where there would be an artist guiding you while you sat and had something nice to drink, um, whether it be wine or whatever you fancy. And, um, and that's how I got reconnected with it. And at one of these events, one of the artists, she actually took a, a liking to me and she then became sort of a mentor to me. And um, she's been pushing me to rediscover myself uh, through my art. And um, I, she's been, that was about, that was about four, this, no, probably five years ago. And um, she's still encouraging me to this day and pushing me to really um, go past my boundaries. 
So that's a little bit about me. Terry, tell me what, I know when you came to Tobago, it was on a healing journey for yourself, mentally, physically, emotionally. What, um, what has your art done for you uh, on that healing journey? And you can call Tobago part of your art. Yes, yes. I'm really glad that you asked that question, Wendy, because as part of my healing, I've done therapy as in psychotherapy. I've done other kinds of things like yoga, meditation. So I've, I've tried um, everything you can, you can think of to help myself. So my therapist would always recommend journaling, um, you know, writing in your, your journal and keeping it as a daily practice. And I tried it, but for some reason I would always stop and fall off the bandwagon and then you know it helped but then I realized one day I really didn't feel it's not that I didn't feel connected but it was almost it was almost painful for me to write these words that I'm feeling and see them reflected back with me in black and white and it was kind of I didn't feel like I wanted to put these words down. I mean, I know you can you can write stuff and burn it, and I've tried that too, but I just didn't even want the thought of these words on paper. These things that I was I was feeling that probably wasn't um, very positive, um, sometimes sad, sometimes angry, frustration, all of these things. I didn't I didn't want to see it in black and white, and that's when I discovered art journaling. So. This is my trusty art journal here. And it's where a lot of my um, work that I do now, that's, it's in this journal. So it's like my little personal Bible. And for me, being able to express myself and how I feel about things using art, it's less glaring, for, it feels less harsh and I can return and, and open this art journal and look at it and see a thing of beauty, even though it may express something that's painful to me it's still something that's a thing of beauty and it's easier on my eyes and easier on my psyche for me so I hope that answers your question that answers it absolutely beautifully yes um, anybody have any questions about that anybody uh, resonate with that in the group welcome uh, Petal and Janelle yes hi guys Any, any Sorry, I would say that it's something that I want to do. So hearing you say that you actually did it is great. I keep on saying I'll get a book and I'm not sure if I'll be journaling what thoughts are in my head or just something that inspires me that day. I just want to take the time to take the therapeutic mode of drawing and letting it expand because I have tried meditation and my brain doesn't go quiet. It makes no sense. What it does is provides me a time to think more about things because I stop everything else. So meditation, I don't work the best. So hearing you just say, it just reminds me, Tari, of being saying this for years, just do it. Just and, do it. And question for you, Terry, do, did you have uh, to take a little course in art journaling? Is it stuff on the internet? Or you just, you just created that, how you did your art journaling for yourself? I just created it how for myself, what I would I would share with you very quickly is that um, the first page that I filled out was in 2018 and I still have this journal. So that's to tell you, I don't do it every day all the time and there were parts in between, but my it's my therapist who got me into this. He told me to do this tree of self-reflection and um, he drew it on a piece of, um, you know, normal paper. And then I just, he said, you know, well, you can do with this what you what you want to. And, and I just decided to, oh, well, let me try. And that's how I got back into it. So for me, it's it's more, it's a very personal process. I haven't really looked on the internet, because but you can. There's so many ideas out there. Oh my goodness. People, people really go to town with the art journaling. But mine is a is a deeply personal process. And I tend to use it um, when I feel inspired and I have a story to tell, then I pull it out and it usually comes out of me. I may not get all the story at the same time, but um, whenever I get the next burst of inspiration, I'll go back to it. For example, this is a piece that I'm currently working on and I have been 
she's um she she's the I started her as a pencil drawing about two years ago, and I've only just started to add ink and color to her now. Now, so, Terry, Terry, all of the pieces that you do are related to your healing process. Would you say that, or some of them are? Um, right now, everything that I do is related to my healing process. And when you started something two years ago, because I know there was also a lot a particular lotus that was started a couple of years ago and that uh, dandelion flower and they sort yes. of they were paintings or drawings that came out of you for from your healing the place that needed healing and yes. now living in Tobago you are ready to put the colors in is that what I'm getting yes Wendy that's exactly what you're getting because there's a there's a lot of color in my life I'll share another um this actually basically sums up if I can find it here, you know, when you're looking for something, you can never find it. But this um, particular drawing sums up how I felt when I came to Tobago and what, and so you see. You might was, hold, hold it very close to the, to the camera. Yeah. Um, right. So can you see? Yes. Right. So that when I came to Tobago, this was me. What, what, do, what do you see, Wendy? Oh, Terry, not see what I feel. I'd ah, like somebody else to say what they feel. Anybody wanted to say what that did for them, for their heart? Pain, brokenness. Right. That's, yeah. it, Arlene, that's it. Mm -hmm. And now you see the difference is now I'm adding, I'm adding color back into my life, as Wendy said. And it happened without me even realizing it so thank you wendy for pointing that out to me but yes but that that image of that heart that's that's how i felt i came to tobago shattered and broken a shell of a person and everything was just dark and gray there was no color in my life how long ago was that terry that was in 2019 uh september of 20 august september of 2019 i came to tobago for the first time I'm getting goosebumps. It took some doing. It took so, some doing. It took you all doing the work and being willing to do the work, Terry. I know that you have been doing work on several levels, not, not only art. You um could you share some of the things that you have been doing in this last couple of years since you come to Tobago to help your healing? Well, I've been definitely um doing meditation. Um it's interesting that um Tara um so oh petal thank you um that tara mentioned um just a, oh gosh this my train of thought just went what was i saying wendy just help me out um, hold on i have to turn down the volume on the phone because i'm checking for comments oh sorry yes oh, i just okay. lost my this is this is part of, of, of my chronic illness you all i'm sorry it's called fibro fog and sometimes i completely lose the train of my thoughts but anyway, I shall, um, what was Tara saying? We're saying um, you started meditating, I think. And it was interesting, something I said. God bless you, Tara. Yes, so I was going to say, um, unlike Tara, I thought that I could meditate. I thought that I could focus um, on keeping my mind silent. But then I began to learn about meditation. And I learned that it's not about keeping your mind quiet. That's never going to happen. Never. <laughs> That's why they call it monkey mind. It's never going to stay quiet. The, what you focus on is being still, allowing the thoughts to come in. And then when they come in, you observe them and just say, okay, hey. And you go back to, you refocus your mind on being still. And that's all you do. So your thoughts are like a little bad toddler. that will be like, mommy, mommy, mommy. And you just pet it and you say, yes, okay, mommy will be with you in a while. And and you refocus and recenter yourself on whatever you were using as maybe if you were using like a mantra or something for meditation or just focusing on your breath. So meditation is something that I have used um, to help me. Um, and it helps, that, like I just said to you guys, I do have issues with um, concentration and I do have cognitive impairment due to my chronic illness. So sometimes I would just totally forget what I'm doing or I can't find the words and that kind of thing. Meditation has helped a lot with that um, in terms of mobility. And of course, 
I'm aging, so you know I'll be 46 this year. So doing the the yoga, the postures, and so on that has helped. So I've done that. Um, I've also been doing courses online because of COVID. So I've done things on on healing crystals, um, energy healing stuff, basically. So those are the kinds of things, Wendy, to answer your question that I've been doing As, with. And, and if I'm uh, correct, you're also still connected to your therapist in Trinidad and you get um, top ups from that person. Um, I, I get, yes, I get top ups. <laughs> okay. I like that. Yes, I do get top ups. Yes, yes that is, that's important. And, um, yeah. and you're processing through your art. So I am trying yeah. to make, make it clear to, to everyone that Terry is doing the work. She's walking the walk. And she came and she came and totally destroyed to Tobago. She found her little space in Tobago. She's living a, a well, you know, with, with what happened the last two years, it was a quiet life. But she used the time to do whatever she, she felt resonated with her heart to help herself. And she is doing the work and she's still doing the work. But the girl that you see here today, well done, Terry. The girl you see here today is shining mm -hmm. colors all over the place. And we are going to look at some of Terry's art shortly. I just wanted to answer some of the, um, well, talk to, tell you some of what's been going on in the chat. We, had, we have three people in the chat, Stacy, uh, Pablo, I believe Janelle also, with Janelle in two places. And Stacy yeah. said, this, gets, this goes to show that art has always lived in you, Terry, and always will. And, um, and Janelle said, broken heart that needed healing. That's res um, with respect to the yeah. thing you showed us. Yeah. And Pablo said healing process, but you have engaged their hearts, Terry. Now, yeah. you guys have any questions for Terry, please go ahead. I'm going to do the little um, share screen thing where I go over and try to find her paintings. But if you have any questions, go, or you wanna to talk to her, please go ahead, okay? There's something in the chat. Um, meditation is a serious exercise. <laughs> And my, my, um, Petal says, a deep bow to you, to, um, Terry. Thanks. Okay. Yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Terry, I'd say the um, drawing you showed, which was a broken heart, you said. I mm -hmm. thought that might be the emotions you're going with, but I kept on seeing the veins of a leaf and those big leaves and was thinking it's like condensation moisture in the leaf. Yes. But then based on what you were saying, I had a thinking goes more the negative way. But it just shows, yeah. Like I was thinking, if you're adding color to things, maybe completely transform what that is now. Because I definitely, I forgot the name of the plants. I don't know if anybody else remember it. So it's big, like heart shaped leaves. Yes, I know and the now. plants you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. So I yeah, so. <laughs> I like to transform things myself. It's not usually such a drastic change, but I mean, it's something to have fun with, unless yeah. you want them. That that's sounds like great. quite a wonderful change. Okay, so Terry, I know that you did offer to share some of your art with yeah. us and the story of your art. Now that yeah. people have seen where you came from and what you were painting in 2019 before you came to Tobago, I am sure they would like to see and understand some of what you are doing now and the stories behind them. Anybody, anybody want to say, nah, this is not interesting? Or everybody going like, yeah, Terry, Terry. <laughs> yeah, Terry, Terry. So Terry, please share with us this is the first of three things that she's agreed to to go deep for yeah. us um well like i was saying this is it, this is in my art journal so um the name of this um composition is aluna and um thank you petal thank you and i wanted to depict this just came it, it came to me and i was just inspired to draw a woman sleeping in a fetal position. Maybe because I am female and I do sleep in a fetal position. So it's it's she's probably supposed to be representative of me, but I felt compelled to draw this. And then I sat there and I looked at it and then later on the rest of the inspiration for the image came to me. So I'll just share with you because a lot of my, um, when I do these pieces, there's a story. So the story goes, um, and as she slumbered, her thoughts were cleansed and her heart was made pure by the love of the universe. Aluna depicts the silent struggle a lot of us experience daily with depressive and negative thoughts where sleep can sometimes be seen as an escape. The wavy streams of blue, violet and green represent these chaotic negative thoughts being absorbed from her mind by the universe, which is depicted as a large heart in the center 
of a, so a stormy sky. And um, these negative thoughts are being replaced by streams of yellow, orange, and red pure love that are going back into Aluna's own heart. She basically is a reminder that we are all love at our very core. And sometimes we just need a little help to remember. So that's Aluna. I would like to hear from the group. Anybody have anything to say? Terry, that is so beautifully impactful. It is so wonderful. I love your art. Well, thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you so much. That piece is done in, um, it's a combination of watercolor and colored pencil. Right. Um, thank you. I'm seeing comments and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, so these, these stories are all very personal to me. So when I share them, I'm actually sharing a piece of myself is how I feel about it. Terry, I'd, I'm like, that. I'd like to say that that is clear when you exp explain the story behind each of your paintings, that is clear to everyone who listens. But what it also does is it touches the hearts of every single I would have to say female because uh, so far I've only experienced the response from females, but your work <laughs> touches the heart of every single one of us because every single one of us has experienced a part or a big, a little part or a big part of one of your, 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 your journeys, one of your, your struggles. Okay. So yeah. you are speaking not only about yourself, but you're speaking for women. You're speaking for, yeah. for the pain in each of us. Um, any, any one of your paintings will touch almost every woman that I know. And that's why I think your work is so very important. And that's why I think you should, if you can, continue to share it because you can really help others by sharing your healing art. That's my belief. Okay, Thank that's you. my belief. Yeah? I agree so, with what Wendy's saying, absolutely. Thank you, Ali. Are you ready to move on to the next painting? Anybody have any other questions about Aluna or feedback? Okay, it only gets better. <laughs> ah, this is Enigma, my shadow self. So I, I was actually doing some research and reading on shadow selves and shadow self therapy. And in the midst of it, I felt compelled to stop what I was reading and pick up my journal. And I drew this, this face and this tree. And I really didn't know what it represented at the time. And I thought, well, I don't know what this is, but I felt that I needed to draw it. And I put down, after I got it out of me, at least the face and the tree, I, um, I left it alone. And then later on, the story started to uh, unfold. So basically the story of Enigma is that she is a reflection of how, I think as women especially, we are socialized to hide the shadowed parts of ourselves which would be the tree, the kind of dead looking tree and the kind of darkness that's there on, it's on my right. And um, we are really socialized to only present beauty and perfection to the world. And that would be all of the pretty, beautiful blooming flowers and that kind of thing. So um, we all have shadow cells, each and every one of us from what I was reading. And it's important that we recognize and accept these darker aspects of ourselves without judgment in order for us to feel whole and alive. And I think that's one of the things that um, shadow work, as they call it, that um, it's, it's saying that if we don't work on, on bringing the two together, right, um, we end up leaving a part of ourselves hidden in the shadows and we never feel whole. So that's, that's Enigma. So this is a uh, watercolor and um, ink and oil-based marker pens. She's also in my journal. So these aren't very big pieces. These are all, this is all my personal art journal, my personal work um, that I'm sharing here with you today. Okay. Now I would like to hear from the group. What do you guys feel when you hear Terry's story and you see Enigma? Does she resonate with anyone here or everyone here? That is so me. <laughs> Terry, I love this piece. Enigma is speaking to me on many, many levels. Yes. 
I understand. I, I hear you completely. She speaks the, the, the black and white pattern you have on the right, it even reminds me of, of like henna and when you, or, or a tattoo that we, are, you know, and it, it's sometimes it's another way that we mask ourselves in, in the world, you know, yes. the adornments yes. we put on, yep. distractions. I love yeah. this. I love this. The other side is equally beautiful with all the flowers. Maybe it's my name. I don't know. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> Yeah, so that yeah, so the, the the beauty, the beautiful side that we show the world, and that's what you know we're we're taught to do. And then we have we have all of these other feelings that we feel. I mean, things that women go through, like postpartum depression, that up until a few years ago was such taboo, and it's a it's a huge deal, and a lot of women deal with it and don't even understand what they're dealing with or going or going through because people don't talk about it. But you know. We are discouraged from talking about it. So yes, guys, like I want to ask the group, would you join me in encouraging Terry to teach and share this stuff? Because <laughs> yes, like, yes. we are resonating with it here. Terry, I would take a class. I don't have an Agreed. artistic bone in my body, but I'll take a class just to try and recreate some of this. Oh my God. So Terry, it's, a, when, it's totally when, and unanimous. And I want to read something from the group about um, from the group on Facebook. Pablo was talking about Aluna. He said, I can connect with her. I also mm -hmm. arrived in Tobago with a broken heart. And reconnecting oh. with your true self is the art of life. Love yeah. in all its forms oh. is the, the essence for oneness. And that is the art of the gift of love. And Stacy said that this art is amazing. Terry, we agree. We all Thank agree. You. Now we're going to take on go on to uh, the third picture because of what she's about. I did not type her name. I'm leaving her to Terry to tell you her name. Yes. Um, okay. So this piece is entitled anonymity. So basically she has no face. She has no name because she represents each and every one of us women who has been through some kind of experience, some kind of trauma in life. And when I say trauma, um, you know, anything negative, anything that would have affected you to your core and things that you have to then heal from. That's what I mean by trauma. So it could be a death in the family, the death of a marriage, things of that nature. Um, and also she represents, um... <laughs> thank you, Pessel. Yes, so she represents, uh, I have the words grow and therapy and then authenticity, because as I would have said to you before, I went through therapy and it really helps me to grow. And, uh, you know, I'm really trying to peel back those layers and, and shed myself of all of this baggage so that my authentic self could, um, could shine through. And actually today I saw a Facebook post where somebody was asking, what really is your authentic self? And to me, it means who you are at your core, because you come into this life with, with core, a core um, being, a core spirit. And then life, because of your experiences, you tend to start putting on cloaks and cloaks of, sometimes it's armor and whatever to defend yourself against what is out there. And it's good to return to your core and your authentic self. And so that's what I'm trying to do with this process. Um, anonymity was born out of a, it was a canvas board that I, I had that I, that had some splatter painting on it. I'd gone to sip and paint and splatter painting is as, as it sounds, you take the paint and splatter it all over the board. And I didn't really care for it, but the sip and paint event was lovely. I went with a, a good friend of mine and we had a great time but I didn't like it. And I just thought, what am I gonna do with this? And one day I was sitting there, it might have been after a therapy session, I'm not sure, but I was looking at this, this board and it was a very chaotic mass of colors and so on. And I saw this face without any features, but I knew it was a female face. And I said, oh, okay, I need to paint this. So I had to go dig out my paints from wherever they were at the time. And I put the face down. And that was about it. And then I put the hair, the hair covers part of her face. It's obscuring it because again, I think um, 
uh, I mean, I can only speak um, of my experience as, as being female in this world. And, you know, you tend to want to, when you have these, these things that you think um, are negative about yourself, you tend to want to hide and fade into the background. You're embarrassed. You don't want people or your shadow self. You don't want people to see that side of you because it's not pretty. It's not attractive. And you tend to want to hide. And as ladies, we have the benefit of, of sometimes having the hair that we can hide behind. So that's why the hair is obscuring part of her face. And she came to Tobago incomplete. And then my art mentor um, contacted me because she wanted a piece, uh, a piece of my work to be featured in um, an exhibition at the Rotunda Art Gallery to do with, uh, she runs an NGO called Chosen Hands um, that works with underprivileged girls. And um, I decided to finish anonymity. And so the butterflies and the piece represent transformation. So this piece is a combination of acrylic paint um, and paper. There's some paper collage and they, actually the flowers that are in her hair are actually 3D, they're made from crepe paper. So yeah, this is, this is anonymity. Wendy, you, you're wow, muted. Terry. <laughs> wow, Terry. For many years in my early 20s, my hair was always half over my face like that. And it is only hearing you speak now that I realized that part of it was me hiding. Mm -hmm. I just, a cool, um, so yeah, old, nearly, and that's why you're looking in your. I knew I wasn't ugly, but I really didn't think I was all that. And I yeah. guess I bought into that too. My hair was always covering a significant portion of my face. And it's, mm -hmm. it never dawned on me that I was hiding until you spoke. Wow. Thank you for that. <laughs> now well, I have some therapy to go do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and I, Janelle, I know just the person for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wonder who that is. <laughs> now, I, I wanted to tell that you know that this also is something that made me remember um, a, a friend of mine, it was a male who for many years, he had, a, he was a very hairy guy and he grew his body hair all over his face. So you could only see his eyes. He had hair like this and a mustache mm -hmm. and a beard. And, and at some point I said, you know, you hiding, you hiding behind it. And he's no, 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 no. But one day he chose to remove some of the hair and expose more of his face. And it was a, a major emotional step for him to do that because all his, all his adult life, he had been hiding and only really looking out at the world and not letting the world see him. And eventually he actually removed most of his facial hair because he got more courage and confident again mm -hmm. during the years that I knew him. So it's not only um, women who hide, the men are suffering from that too. It's just that maybe we are more ready to hear it and to, and to, and to be open to what's needed to, 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 to progress from there. Yeah? Wendy, so that's well said. You're so right. Okay, so I am going to stop the share, unless you want yeah. us to stay looking at, at this beautiful picture forever. I'm gonna stop the share and come back to the group so that everybody can uh, talk together for a few minutes. Okay. Would you guys have any questions for Terry or anything you wanna to say to her or share with her? Keep up the art, Terry, whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you. Pablo says, beautiful. My wife and I, his wife is, uh, had her, they had her, their anniversary last week. She, oh, she yeah. I that. What's that? I remember Pablo from yes, Pablo and Lisa. The, the anniversary was last week, and they said, my, he said, my wife and I love it. Okay. Okay. Thank right. you. And Terry, um, does anybody want to sign up to Terry's first Art Through Healing course? I'm in. Um, 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 Petal, Petal is not showing her hand because Petal is hiding behind yes. the, the camera. Yeah, I'm <laughs> okay. No, so, I'm not showing my hand either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Terry, is there any advice you have for our group um, before we, we, we say goodbye? Uh, actually, I do. Um, I just want to say that I think, you know, a lot of, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I can't do art, I can't do art, I can't do art. 
There's an artist in, in everyone. And we all, you know, what's so sad, we all know this. It's just like I was saying about coming into the world and you, you have your, your core self and it's there and then life experience just kind of dumps all kinds of stuff on top of you and you get lost. It's like everyone who's encountered a child and the child comes and brings the little drawing that they do of the stick man or just lines, scratches on a paper and you go, what? How beautiful, how wonderful. Some people get it framed, you put it on your fridge, whatever. And when do we lose that? When and why do we lose that? Because every child is an artist to an adult and you encourage them and you praise them. And it's, it's everybody has that in them, that, that spark of creativity. Some people, it would resonate with them more than others. For me, writing was not something that resonated with me. So being a visual storyteller and telling my story of my journey, that's what resonated. But anyone, you can pick up a pencil and, and paper. And um, I have a good friend of mine. He's always making jokes about taking a line for a walk and how he hates that. And he doesn't know why they tell you to do that when you're learning art in, in school. What kind of thing? Take your pencil for a walk and take a line for. And I'm, I had him sit down and do that one day. I'm like, come on, you're doing this. Take it for a walk. And I, I showed him how it was easy to create little patterns in the spaces. And he was quite pleased with himself after. So anyone can do it. You don't have, I mean, I am not Van Gogh or Pablo Picasso or anything like that. I'm just a regular person reconnecting with something that I loved and sharing my story. So but you your know, advice to everyone is that anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. And There's an artist in everyone. And Terry but can be our inspiration, our guide. And if we are lucky, she might even agree to be our teacher. Thank you, Terry. You have to be good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you all for being here and for your wonderful questions and your energy. Terry, we loved it. And I think you're going to find a lot of people reaching out to you online to give you positive and wonderful comments about your art. Many, many Thank blessings. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. I appreciated it. Thank you.